our passion didn't start with a mouth. It started with people, with the well-being of the profession. And if you're like me, maybe a little bit of your nerdiness in all things tech too. We all want to love what we do, but the truth is burnout, people problems, and glass ceilings can keep us from doing what we set out to do. So let's get back to the heart of connection. Welcome to the Dental Handoff. This show is about passing you the knowledge, the habits, the systems, and the strategies to lead your teams, lean on your tech, and listen to your gut while you take care of people and truly the overall health of our communities. Let's stop using the wrong end of the toothbrush, y'all. My name is Dr. Kelly Tanner. Oh, and uniquely, I'm a dental hygienist too. You can consider me a guru in the dental and leadership industry. With over three decades of experience, My goal is to take you to the next level by empowering growth, perspective, and confidence. By identifying the gaps, recognizing the plaque, and extracting the truth with the other experts in the field. I'll share their stories, empower you to own yours, and elevate your passion in the process. So have a seat in the chair, put on your bib, and let's get to work. Welcome to our special episode, Dental Insights, your trusted practice members, a podcast where two dental experts, Dr. Kelly Tanner and Erica Flato, are helping you and areas of your practice. Erica, take it away. Well, uh, a big, big subject for dental practitioners is uh, patients that refuse standard of care requirements and what to do about it. We've all faced this. And it can um, it can be a really challenging uh, aspect of our day. Um, it can be something we already start pre-suffering about when we look at our schedule, if we know this person's coming in, or even a new patient, because um, I know that I've created scenarios in my mind that are possibly going to happen. Um, typically, I'm incorrect, by the way. <laughs> Um, But, you know, you see somebody hasn't been in for 10 years and it's like, oh, boy, here we go. We're going to we're going to be up against a resistant person. And again, as we mentioned in our previous episode, we we the assumptions of what patients value and believe and their experiences um, sit with us and opening our minds and our hearts to the fact that we really don't know. And we've got to do a lot of listening to assess this patient. It takes a lot of that pre suffering away. So when we meet someone, Kelly, that is um, resistant to, let's just take an FMX, for instance, Mm -hmm. what has been your experience in the past uh, when you were a baby hygienist and uh, you were faced with this? (laughs) Well, first, honestly, I would get upset because I'm like, why are they refusing? You know, as a baby hygienist, I'm like, I don't get it. Why wouldn't they do this? Right. And not not understanding, but, you know, this was almost 30 years ago, too, where, everything was different. We were still using film, Mm -hmm. but, um, you know, I would, I felt that it was my, it is, I knew that it was because it's the law that I am informing them Mm -hmm. about the risks of not doing the full mouth set of x-rays and that I would, I think back then we would have them sign the chart. (laughs) Which by the way, does not hold up in court. (laughs) We would have him sign the chart. There was no like extra, you know, piece of paper with the extra refusal. Right. Form, but... did, they, did you have to sign in blood or? No, no. Oh, <laughs> uh... <laughs> yeah. I can borrow um, your probe. Yeah, let me borrow your probe. Okay. <laughs> and so let's see. So have them understand that what we're looking for without it. But then a lot of offices said, you know, you can, you can do this for however, like maybe twice. And then after that, we had to refer you out because we can't, we can't give you a full comprehensive exam without x-rays. X-rays. Absolutely. Yeah. But sometimes they would be like, oh, is it that important? Or it took the doctor coming in to say mm-hmm. it. Right. Um, so, uh, a really nice strategy that I've found is, um, in the huddle, like, Hey, Dr. Um, Mrs. Jones is coming in. She always refuses it. I'm, I'm going to have a conversation with her today. And it's, if you're going to have an ultimatum with the patient and a confrontation, it's just not going to end well. Everybody's going to be left Mm -hmm. feeling, um, you know, just upset. Um, it's definitely, uh, tense. And so, if you know this person consistently uh, refuses sitting them down and saying, 
hey, I was reviewing your case this morning with Dr. So-and-so, and he is very concerned. If it's if you have a read on that patient mm. that you know that they're going to take the doctor's word over you as a hygienist, um, and, and you're having to bring the doctor in because they know they, they're the ones that need to tell them, that's silly. I mean, as a hygienist, you definitely have the authority to let them know you need them to do your job as well. Mm -hmm. But the confrontation never goes well. Just, hey, I was having this conversation with Dr. So-and-so. We were going over your case. So they know you were reviewing their chart. It's, you probably weren't. But you re this is like, hey, everybody needs these. But they are hearing this is specific for me. Mm -hmm. It's been seven years since I've had this done. And a, a really neat tip and trick is I've, I put up my own FMX um, because it's not a HIPAA violation. And I go, I just want to show you this. These are mine. And if you just indulge me for a second, um, because it, until I went to dental hygiene school, I didn't know this. Like, so I make it like, oh, it's not that just that they're uninformed. Like I didn't know this either. And I just really want to show, show you what we're looking for. And I drag my finger across the screen and I say, see, these are the ones that we take annually Well, on them. Who knows? But this, these are the ones we take annually. And you see, they're a great survey of your teeth. We cram a lot of teeth into one picture because we're trying to reduce the amount of images, but they just chop off the roots. And you can see that, see the roots are just chopped off and every so often. And then I drag my finger around the PAs and I say, we really need to see the root ends because this is where um, an infection or a problem in the bone would lie. And when they're hearing you speak that way, this is this is probably better than anything the doctor could say. I mean, this 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 girl knows her stuff. And okay. um, and every so often we really need to see this because we're very concerned that it's been seven years. And if something's going on down there, we're responsible for you. And as a patient, I just feel like that would be so much better than it's our office policy and you mm -hmm. got to do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's been X amount of time in a lunar cycle and <laughs> your insurance covers it. Not good excuses. And yeah. what I, what I bring in too, now that I'm not a baby hygienist, are there risk factors? You know, sure. I, I, when we were talking about your diet earlier, you mentioned that you love soda or that you love Jolly Ranchers or whatever, or that we noticed there was quite a bit of demineralization on your teeth and you have a history of caries, whatever X is, whatever that fill in the blank is. What we find a lot of times is that if we can catch these areas earlier, we can prevent more costly dental procedures for you because a lot of times when they're smaller, they don't hurt. We can catch them earlier, be more minimally invasive. And, you know, we do this by taking x-rays and again, it, it's probably not bothering you or any concern, but then also too, you can relate that just like you said, Erica, to pathology. Right. And if we're talking caries, um, you know, I'll show them like where the nerve of their tooth is and where we find uh, caries on images. And if it's caught early, well, nothing hurts. No, nothing's going to hurt until if you could imagine this lesion being so large that it's starting to affect the nerve of your tooth. And then we're talking about more expensive invasive procedures, a lot of heartache and sometimes tooth loss. And we, we don't like pain to be our indicator. And when I say that, it's like, Hmm, you know, it gets them thinking they become, you're bringing them in as part of the, um, the choices that are being made about their health and you're informing them in a way that they can understand in, you know, general terms, they can understand why making a decision to have these taken is, um, is really, I don't want to say you're fooling them into thinking that it's their choice because they really, you have to have them, but letting them be part of that decision and then they'll stand behind it rather than it being something you're forcing upon and they're just giving in. And if you want to get legal, uh, patients have far more rights than responsibilities, far more. We have way, way, way more responsibilities than rights. And we don't get to be ignorant. We don't get to not know. They don't have to know. They don't have, they don't mm -hmm. have to know. We don't get to do that. So if we're consistently allowing a patient and, and, and committing supervised neglect, then um, we really are liable and responsible for that. And signing the chart and saying, well, they refused. It doesn't let us off the hook uh, legally because we know better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was just thinking too about, I love what you said about rights and responsibilities and 
I had another thought, but it just left my head. Um, I think it was around the the where the where the lesion was and yeah. where it is for the nerve when you're looking at caries, when you're looking at periodontal disease, because periodontal disease obviously doesn't really ever hurt <laughs> so, right. so most of the it's, time. I would, it's there's no symptoms. Yeah. And yeah. It, and it's it's very I always I say to patients, it's very sneaky. It's not going to tell you that there's a problem and it doesn't hurt. And it's, it's, it's just, it's symptom free for the most part. Yeah. And then that kind of lights their eyes up a little bit too. Cause they're, they, they, you know, pain has been their indicator. Something's wrong in their, in their health. And you can liken it to high blood pressure. You know, that's very silent and sneaky too. Patients. This is what I was going to say is that it doesn't matter where you're going to the dentist, what doctor you're seeing, what aspect of life that you're in, we like to have autonomy. Mm -hmm. It's important that we all have autonomy and transparency. And it's not just us saying this, it's many other industries saying this because it's, it's a human right to know all the information. And I think with the access, I, I know I'm going a little bit, you know, off grid a little bit, but our community, our patients are changing and what they're expecting from us and how we act, how we behave, how we, how we are informing them of these things, because they could have, they can pull a lot of information off of the web, but they, if you think about where the world is, it's just, they just had a, some kind of transparency act, you know, with their federal trade commission, past that people want to know where their information is going. They want us, they want us to, they want to know. And so by doing this, we know that we can lay our heads down the pillow, that we are serving those patients in the best way. But no matter what, we all want to feel like we're in control of ourselves. And for someone to say, thou shalt have, you know, thou shalt have FMX today because I said so daggone, (laughs) then it's, that it's, they're like, okay, says who? And that's also the generation that's like my daughter's generation now. That's just like, I'm not, I'm not doing that because you said to do so. Tell me why, tell me more. Right. Well, and you can also, I mean, if the person hasn't had it in seven years, yes, you need it, but is six months going to be the end of the world? No, it's not. So you, re- so I have an opportunity today to inform you that in order to continue going forward and taking great care of you, that's not an ultimatum, even though I'm kind of saying it, um, in order to continue to go forward, taking great care of you, Kelly, um, I am really going to need to um, prepare you that we'll be taking these next time. And we're going to, so whatever that is, they have to financially prepare for it, or they have to mentally, emotionally prepare for it, whatever it is that's holding them back. Um, but this is going to be the expectation going forward. Now, this conversation takes some time in your appointment, but it's going to save so much time at future appointments because you've really set the expectation for what you need diagnostically to take care of them. But you're not being a, you know, a hard ass about it. It's like, okay, we're not going to do it today, but I really need you to understand that I'm going to schedule some extra time and we're going to get this done next time. And, um, and this is, this is going to be really, really important for us to work together to take great care of you. Um, I think people can, can also that, that helps them feel a little more in control of their own autonomy, like you were saying. Yeah. And I was thinking too, with our previous conversations about, this is one of those things where we know what happens when people don't take x-rays and Mm -hmm. to, to go into um, a patient's limiting beliefs and our limiting beliefs and try to take the blinders off of what we know to be true. And so I think too, the office has to be, the doctor has to be really clear and support of Mm -hmm. what the what that protocol is for these patients. Well, two things, what the protocol is if a patient keeps refusing it, because we are liable for it yeah. here at the end, the law says that we are Two, what, what is, what is the patient concerned about? Is it finances? Is it radiation? Is right. it past radiation? And mm-hmm. so it, I think that drives the conversation on how we connect with the patient. Absolutely. And so, you know, I try not to bring up, Oh, is it radiation? Is it money? Because I'm just bringing up their objection. But if they bring it up, um, and they usually will, you know, I mean, the financial part might, they might be a little embarrassed to bring that up, but the radiation part, um, having some really solid answers that are not argumentative, but just really, really solid. Like, this is what I know about what I'm exposing you to. This is, um, comparatively to years past. Um, 
and and how amazing digital is and what we can see. Um, and then and then I even say, you know, I have I do this myself and I I take these on my children and my family. And when I say that, I think that it's like, okay, like she's putting her money where her mouth is. This is important to her. Um, and there's and the risk is so little that she would do this with her own kids. Yeah. How yeah. I usually couch that is I bring the evidence in. I make it customized again to them because of the the higher carries risk, because we know that you've had uh, bone loss or you have diabetes or whatever it is. It go, it's going off the of medical history, making it customized, talking about what you've already talked about during that procedure. What we recommend is what the doctor usually likes to see is, and here's why now. And then you're, they're usually like, yeah, okay, cool. Go ahead and do it. Or they're like, uh, do you really have to, right? Yeah. And so how I have turned that corner many times in our clinic where I teach at a dental hygiene school, I've seen that most recently so I, so I can use those examples. It's not about the cost because it's it's free. It's a free clinic. And so yeah. people, say, people would say, uh, and how that usually sounds with money too, if they are concerned about it is, I don't know if my insurance covers it, right? Yeah. That's how that sounds usually. But in the case where you know that it's not about money, because that's and because you know it's a free clinic or you, that whatever. Yes, yeah, so that gives you a great that. insight into into other objections. Yes, and so I, then I say we are we would only ever take what is absolutely necessary for you, and this is really going to help us determine the best course of action. Right. How do you feel about what I just said? And mm-hmm. I stop again. And then you hear their thoughts and their emotions. And then also too, Erica, if you're taking a digital health scan, if you have taken pictures, this reinforces the why behind we're doing it other than it's been another year or six months that we're doing it. Yes. And you're right. That customized reason for, you know, that we've, um, you know, Elliot, your last few appointments, we've discovered this, or um, we're very concerned about that. And it, you're right. It's not making it just about a policy or it's been so many years. That's where Dr. So-and-so and I were, Dr. So-and-so where I were really discussing your case this morning. And he was very concerned that it has been this long and we haven't seen these areas. It is bringing up the time, but I, I think I, you and I are on the same page with wanting to customize it to them, especially. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and I I really would discourage um, giving them away for free if it is a financial concern because that that sounds like well if the person's just really be putting up a, a stink about the money and then it's like okay fine we need them because we don't want to be responsible so we're just going to give we're just going to do this for free and I know your clinical setting is different I'm talking oh, about yeah. Your yeah, practice. Yeah. Um, that uh, that devalues what you do. That de- devalues the time it takes uh, to run the practice, and then and then that can just be a slippery slope into into um, not charging for what we do. And um, we do need to charge to give the best quality care. And um, discounting something or making it forty nine dollars for your cleaning and your X rays and your exam, um, you know, I I. I have, I struggle with that because if it does get the patient in the door, I get it. It's an, it's a new patient that's going to benefit the practice and them for long-term, but giving the x-rays away for free because this person has put up such an argument and such a fight and you don't want to lose them as a patient devalues what we do. Mm -hmm. Um, And so it's, it's not negotiable, but it is something that they can prepare for, for their next visit. Yeah. That's gone over really well. And I think that's a whole other topic to uh, valuing through what you're saying and what you're not saying. That's a whole other topic we could do. And, you know, I hadn't even thought about until you said that giving it away for free, if it is a, if it is an objection, because, yeah, because I just, I mean, I know that we take the pre and post-op photos of uh, uh, x-rays of things, but I truly find that if I can show them or tell them exactly why I'm taking that, that it makes all the difference. And they'll say, can we wait until next time? Because mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. They usually will give you some type of valid reason yeah. why. And I don't have time or da, da, da. Then mm-hmm. I say patient states, patient states, they don't have time today. Yes. Patient is aware that, and that's how you document that. Yeah. 
And then next time it is, it's, it's happening and that's how we're scheduling it. And this, like I said, this will take a lot of talking, um, but it's going to save time at future appointments. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because you've set the expectations for what you need diagnostically to take great care of them. And we're different in this practice. We do not compromise on that. We take great care of our patients. So and then also to argue with that. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I'm thinking too, as we're talking with the advent of many offices not accepting insurances anymore, it's not not that we ever took it because it, that's what insurance said that we could do, but it's right. because even with patients who have higher risk factors, we sometimes take them more often. And we don't, you know, it doesn't even matter if insurance covers, it's just what the it's what the mm. the, the patient needs and what the, what it what the what it requires. But with many people not, because we're, our, our cons, the consumers are making different choices now because with dental insurance out of the picture, right. if they really like Dr. So-and-so, like I see my doctor who doesn't even participate with my insurance. They don't participate in any insurances. So I go in and I pay as a hygienist money up front. And then I just got my check yesterday from yeah. my insurance company. That's right. the way it's going. And right. so with that, we need to be prepared to stand behind what it is. But in doing that, you guys, it's all about spending more time with the patient to look and take, lift up the hood and look at the medical history and all the under other risk factors, right? Right. And why you're concerned. And, mm -hmm. and the insurance company, of course, we can't let them dictate what we do. But the with especially with my patients that I have uh, you know a relationship with where we you know we're real, we, we're close we get along I, I can just say they would love it if you lost all your teeth and they wouldn't have to take care of them for you I mean we don't let them dictate what we recommend because they do not have your best interest at heart and it's it's a consideration for our patients we always try to maximize your benefits as best as we can. But when I may, are ma am making recommendations to you it is never going to be based on what they think it's going to be based on what you need. And, um, and they like though, that I'm still saying it's a consideration for our patients. We have to be mindful of it and we will do our very best to maximize that for you, but we're never going to let it limit us and what, um, care we give you. So I think you and I are on the same page with, um, with, with, that comes across so authentically, so genuine mm -hmm. to our patients when we speak that way about it. To our followers, what are you, what, what are you saying? What is, what are your magical phrases that you can share with mm -hmm. the other groups and listeners? And I know that we have many dentists and hygienists and all types of different uh, team members listening to this podcast. So tell us what works for you because we want to share that with the group and we're just sharing our, our, little hallmark, hallmarks of success, but always, I think that if you always make it about the patient yeah. and you are, and you just, and they know that you truly care by how you say it and taking that time to read them, that it solves so many, so many issues <laughs> and you can connect better with them. Mm -hmm. And I think you're right. I've seen it, it turn. I really have had less and less issues and I don't know if it's my delivery or if it's patients, uh, transitioning a little bit into caring more about their health and wanting to know more um, and understanding that there's just some things that have to get done. And maybe, maybe COVID did bring that about. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. But um, when it comes to um, perio or restorative, going back to a, a previous episode, just not being afraid to have the conversation, um, not making up in our minds how it's going to go. And then it's going to be um, aggressive or it's going to be uncomfortable. It doesn't have to be. And if, and if we're going in ready for a fight, you're probably going to get one. So just going in, being willing to listen, being willing to take the time. We all have the pressure of time. But if you say to your doctor, Hey, this is my one patient today, you're not going to do this all day long, but this is my one patient today. They need to have this conversation with me. This might be what we get accomplished today. And I need to you to be okay with that because I really need this to do my job. And that might be a perio conversation, or it might be a um, restorative conversation. It might be a referral conversation because the patient has to just, they have to move on. Or it might be a conversation about an FMX, just like what we discussed today. Yeah. Um, but I, I typically um, have made up scenarios in my mind and stories in my mind that I think I'm going to experience, and they are almost always not correct of what actually happens with that patient. 
And um, so I encourage you out there, listeners, to go in with open eyes and open ears and be prepared for a success. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, there you have it. Erica, another episode of Yay! Dental Insights, your trusted <laughs> practice mentors. You guys, are you enjoying this? Let us know in the comments. And yeah. Erica, thanks again. And I will see you soon again, my friend. Thank you so much, Kelly. Thank you, listeners. <laughs>